In this video, we are going to look at naming ionic compounds, and we're gonna be looking at some transition metals, which can possibly have more than one charge. So let's maybe take a look at our periodic table. And we talked about things in family one, having a plus one charge because it loses one electron, family two losing two electrons become like the next noble gas these things having minus one or these things having minus two. Well, metals have plus charges because they lose electrons, but it's like, you look at something here, is it gonna lose like 10 or eight or whatever, 10 electrons or something to become like a noble gas? Not likely. But remember how we talked about subshells. So what happens there's subshells and sometimes the subshells can even be split. And sometimes electrons, just enough electrons are lost to get rid of a subshell or even a sub subshell. And we aren't gonna explore that, but what we see is the result. And the result is that in our cations, we have things like chromium, which can be plus two or plus three, or copper is commonly plus one or plus two, or mercury is plus, uh, you can get different charges on mercury, you can get different charges on tin, you can get different charges on um, iron right here. So what happens is when we want to name things, we want to be specific. Just like if we asked um, who was the president during the New Deal, well, if you say Roosevelt, you're right, but is it Teddy or is it Franklin? And it's one of those cases where you need to be more specific and identify things. So that's really the whole point of what we're doing in this lesson. And let's take a look at, let's go back here, naming ionic compounds with variably charged transition metals. It's just metals that could have more than one possible charge, and we just need to identify that. So anytime you see a Roman numeral, okay, and this is a Roman numeral too, that's gonna be the charge, okay? And if it's, a, if it's a Roman numeral, it's always a positive charge. And this is typically with metals, we'll have the positive charges. So if I'm drawing this, I can just say, oh, I know mercury is plus two, because I see that Roman numeral there, okay? And recalling from um, our periodic table, you could look at the common ionic charge, you could look at, uh, you could look at family seven, the halogens, and you'll see that chloride is minus one. So you got a plus two, you got a minus one, and I just write this out, and I'll say HG right here, and supposed to be a G, I'm gonna say it's plus two is the charge of it. And Cl has a minus one charge on it. And we get that from either the common ion chart or just looking at the periodic table for uh, Cl. So if you have a plus two and a minus one, to balance that, to get equal charge, you have to have two things at minus one to balance one thing at plus two. So my formula is HgCl2, all right? And let's see, um, do you need the charges? No, but you can leave them in there because it's just showing work on how you got there. If we have to name this, we just wanna be specific so we don't confuse it with mercury one or another mercury. So I just say mercury and then in print Roman numerals two chloride. Now there is a Latin way, and you'll see that on the common ion chart right next to it. I could say mercurus, actually it should be mercuric, okay, for plus two. All right, that's a mistake on my part. And it would be mercuric chloride right there. Okay, next one is lead. Well, if I see a Roman numeral two, I'm led to believe that that would be plus two, okay? If I'm looking for CO3, that's a polyatomic. Let me see, I'm gonna go look on my common ion chart because I don't remember what that is. And I'm gonna scroll up and I gotta go through a couple of assignments here. And I think I see carbonate right here. So this whole thing, CO3 has a minus two charge. So carbonate is CO3 with a minus two charge and it's called carbonate. All right, I can scroll back. 
and Okay, so we got CO3 said had a minus two charge. So let's put that in there. And if we're drawing this, I'm gonna say PB, I'm just gonna do it down here, okay, is plus two. Let's be a plus sign. And this whole thing, remember with polyatomics, I rope them off. CO3 is going to be minus two. So I'm going to rope that off. And remember this three is not a balancer. It's just part of the ion. So I don't worry about that. Plus two, minus two balances. So that's right. Okay, in this case, you really wouldn't need the parentheses because you don't have additional things here. You don't need the charges, but if you leave them then I'm okay with it. This would be PbCO3, okay? How would we name it? We'd say Pb is lead and it has a charge of two. We wanna specify because sometimes lead can be plus four. And then the last name was carbonate, which we pulled from the common ion chart. If you look at the common ion chart, you'll see it could be plumbus carbonate and that is just the Latin notus plumbus. That's where they get the PB from and the um, element um, abbreviation. So that would be an example right there. Uh, I'm just gonna clear this quick and let's see, just going back up here real quickly is I'm just gonna look at that plumbus right here and I'm gonna find my metals and let's see if I look for lead, I'll see plumbus for plus two and plumbic for part four. So those Latin names are sometimes in parentheses there and you can use them, but we usually just use the Roman numerals. Okay, let's just go to the next page and do a couple examples from this. And I think we're on page, we just did page nine. We're gonna look a little bit at page 10. And so if I'm naming this right here, Let's go right here. I look at this and I say, I know chlorine is a minus one charge. And I have three of them. This is my balancer. So I have three things at minus one. Now, if I look at my common iron chart, I'm gonna find iron can be plus two or plus three. What is it in this case? It's acting as plus three because I only have one of them at plus three. So I have one iron at plus three balancing three chlorides at minus one. So that would be the right uh, formula. And I'm gonna call this iron, and I wanna be specific, iron, I think I'm not gonna put the parenthesis in here and I'll do a one, two, and three. That's my Roman numeral. And it is not chlorine, but it becomes chloride. And if you look at the key, it is a little bit done more neatly when you check things out. Okay. Careful that's a D and it would be iron three chloride. Now let's look at maybe just another example. And I think I'm gonna look at number 22, iron three oxide. So this is a Fe. With a plus three. Because the number doesn't tell you how many, it tells you the charge. And then oxide, if we looked on the common ion chart, or if you looked in family six, you'd see that was minus two. So I'm gonna put them minus two. Oh, we got that three, two thing going. What's the smallest number that both two and three go into? It's six. So I'm gonna have two things at plus three and three things at minus two. Two times plus three is plus six, three times minus two is minus six, charges balance. Notice the threes are opposite twos are opposite, except there's a 
the negative sign, which you really can't see right in here. All right, now notice, sometimes you don't leave the charge in there. When I say iron three oxide, it's gonna look like Fe2O3 because this three does not refer to how many, it refers to the charge, which is up here. So be careful with that one. All right, good luck with pages nine and 10. Let me know if you have questions with this. Thank you.